1949 in newly independent India Vallapad a small backward coastal fishing village like any other in the Malabar district of the erstwhile Madras presidency People in this coastal strip called Manapuram depended on fishing and subsistence agriculture Cut off from the mainland by the Connolly Canal life was a struggle VC Padmanabhan a son of the soil had come back home from the island of Ceylon where he had gone in search of his fortunes He sets up his own small business and thus was born Manapuram Financial Trust Manapuram Financial Trust was formed for providing financial and other assistance for the needy Those days there were only a few banks around the enterprising VC Padmanabhan foresaw the need to cater to ordinary people who needed money for small purposes and did not have the capacity to approach banks the banks were not giving the required amount for their purpose even if they pledged all ornaments they possess in fact it was a great service to the ordinary people of this coastal area Manipuram Financial Trust got into money lending and pawn broking on a modest scale. Over the years, VC Padmanabhan earned a reputation for integrity. Vishwasitha. Madhmanabhan's Vishwasitha. That's what I want to say. We are going to be able to get out of this way. We are going to be able to get out of this way. We are going to be able to get out of this way. We are going to be able to get out of this way. We are going to be able to get out of this way. എന്ന് ജനങ്ങൾക്ക് നല്ല ഉറപ്പാണ് കാരണം അത്രയും സത്യസന്ധമായിട്ടും സുതാര്യമായിട്ടും കാര്യങ്ങൾ നടത്തിക്കൊണ്ടിരുന്നത് പണ്ടെന്ന് വെച്ചാൽ ഈസ്റ്റ് പോയാലും അത് തപ്പി തിരഞ്ഞെടുത്ത് എത്ര കൊല്ലങ്ങൾ കഴിഞ്ഞാലും ആ സ്വർണം നമുക്ക് തിരിച്ചു തരാനുള്ള ഒരു മനസ്സുള്ള മനുഷ്യനായിരുന്നു ഒരുമനാവട്ടെ It became known as a safe haven for the deposits of the local people. offering higher returns with the highest safety moreover manapuram financial trust was the financial backbone to the below average people especially fishermen living in the coastal belt corporate office of manapuram finance limited one of india's leading nbfcs today more than 3500 branches across 27 states and union territories over 20000 people work in the many companies within the manapuram group with interests in areas like gold loans home and vehicle loans asset finance jewelry healthcare information technology and insurance broking the one person singularly responsible for shaping manipuram into what it is today is vp nandakumar son of vc padmanabhan who took over in 1986 after his father passed away it is true that most big business houses have had humble beginnings but the manipuram story has something more to it the credibility he he has earned over the uh, few decades uh, which was very helpful for me in building the organization to the next level so uh, the strong foundation is the faith uh, and credibility he has established uh, amongst the masses is the biggest capital even uh, which even today i hold as the major Uh, a, a point of success for uh, as far as on a premise concern when vc padmanabhan breathed his last in 1986 nearly 40 years after he started it manapuram was still a modest 200 square feet office present only at palapad he didn't want to grow the business he just wants to keep it small just one branch so that was about him and those days about the business we want to talk about it is you know it was a deposit taking company where still a gold loan company by taking deposits so you need to 
secure the trust of people. So the credibility was there. He has established the credibility. So that's something amazing. At those days, um, my grandfather, actually, he had a self-imposed cap of about 25 lakhs, beyond which he wouldn't accept any deposits. So what he does is when somebody withdrew money, he would send a letter in, in an inland letter uh, to ask the person on the first waiting list to come and deposit his money. And such was the formidable reputation of the firm that even as it remained rooted in Valapad, deposits came in from here and beyond, from locals who had moved out of the area to other parts of India and abroad, who continued to carry their faith in the Manapuram name. Back in the early 80s, when I had just entered college, uh, our family was going through a financial crunch. Uh, my father had to move to Bihar. At this time, my father had some savings, uh, which he put as a deposit in Manapuram Financial Trust. And I remember Manapuram paid an annual interest of 18%. And every month, a cheque of rupees uh, 750 would come to us with uh, clockwork regularity. It was a great help to us in those days. Over decades, the Manapuram name had come to acquire a wealth of goodwill among people of the area. That goodwill was its hidden reserves. It became the rock-solid base on which was founded the spectacular performance that followed in later years. When his son, Sri V.P. Nandagumar, took over the business, it was on this foundation of trust that Mr. Nandagumar successfully built the present corporate entity. V.P. Nandagumar came to Manapuram with the experience and exposure of a bank officer. Unlike his father, he was keen to expand and grow the business. And it was nothing but the credibility of the Manapuram name that came to his help. The cap on deposits was given up and depositors rushed in with their savings. VP Nandakumar then promoted Manapuram Finance Limited in 1992. And in 1995, he had its shares listed on the prestigious Bombay Stock Exchange. The public issue was successful and eventually oversubscribed largely because people from these parts invested unhesitatingly. For them, the name Manapuram itself was adequate due diligence. Even for the public issue, the major support for, was from this coastal area. It was oversubscribed around two times, but around one time has come from uh, the, this place alone. It is because of the credibility. So the major success can be attributed, as, especially in the initial years, uh, the credibility my father has earned. The insistence on fair dealing was not restricted to his customers alone. It was also reflected in a heightened civic sense, uncommon for those days and times. Because integrity essentially is a way of life. He was very transparent and law-abiding in doing business. Uh, he never violated any you know, rules of the land and very honest in, uh, making, in uh, making tax payment also, whatever is due. So he was very honest, perhaps, uh, as I understand, uh, he, he was those days in 60s and uh, early 70s, he was the only person from this coastal area who was uh, an income tax assessee. This shows his transparency and uh, yeah, honestness to every stakeholder. Beyond his career and profession, in his personal life, V.C. Padmanabhan was a warm, caring family man. He instilled in us values of hard work, integrity, humility and responsibility. He was our safety, guidance and role model. He was a principle-based person, responsible, caring, strict in his guidelines and yet very understanding. At the same time, he was very strict and perfect in the financial dealings and he never allowed to waste money. Normally, he never get angry to others, including family members. I was not lucky to have his presence more than eight years as a daughter-in-law. Late Mr. V.C. Padmanabhan was very simple and honest, 
with great integrity and with an attitude to help others. He was giving more importance for education and was giving assistance for many who were in need. And in his own humble way, he was also something of a philanthropist. He was, of course, a supporter of uh, higher education. I don't want to name anybody, but I understand even doctors, dental surgeons and engineers who were financed by him, of course, unknowingly, that I should say. And uh, he did not want to have any name or fame for that activity. My personal experience about him is that he is the only person for my professional achievement. With these words, I bow my head in front of him and his family.